I'm going to say a good number, right, Ron? Yep. Well, I got better news on ADP than I do on the Red Sox. 978,000, almost 1 million jobs created during the month of May, according to the automatic data processing people. Uh, 333,000 in small, 338 in medium, and 308 in large. So pretty evenly divided. But the real surprise, I, I guess it's not a surprise, the real big number that catches your attention is 440,000 jobs in the leisure and hospitality Hospitality space. Wow. Yeah. Last month, the economy created or restored, shall we say, 331,000. So even more people, uh, waiters, waitresses, etc., coming back to work during the month of May, according to ADP. Also, some big numbers in goods producing: 65,000 construction workers and 52,000 manufacturing. So some really good numbers for ADP. The forecast for the uh, jobs report tomorrow is for 650,000. We'll see if that moves at all, 655,000 on the back of this strong okay. ADP report. I want to open this up, Mike, because we go to claims coming up. Let's start with basic ideas. Which is more important, claims in 12 minutes or what we see right now in ADP? Well, they're both about the same in the sense that claims doesn't tell us a whole lot about what's going to happen tomorrow other than in a broader trend sense. The fewer claims there are, the more people may be getting jobs. Uh, but the two numbers aren't specifically correlated. And ADP, while it is a hiring index, doesn't always correlate well with the U.S. Uh, numbers. Uh, ADP last month, 645,000, where we only had, uh, what, uh, 266,000, uh, uh, according to the government payrolls but, numbers. Mike, so then make the case for why we care at all about these numbers. What do these numbers tell us if they are noisy and if they don't necessarily correlate to the overall and official numbers that really do move markets? Well, we've always said about about ADP, Lisa, that traders got to trade, and it gives them something to trade on that is related to the payrolls report, which everybody trades on. So that drives some of the interest. Uh, in general, you look at it because it is a sort of uh, coincident indicator that gives you an idea of the direction of hiring, not necessarily of the magnitude. And of course, it's really hard to get the magnitude right. Uh, these days, given the enormous disruption, I was thinking this morning, uh, I, I was feeling sorry for Tom and myself, people who make charts, because the Y axis is all messed up in March and April of last year. And you, you can't, it's hard to show things on charts these days. I know this is a, this is a little violin for people on radio that I'm playing yeah. right now. I'm really uh, enjoying it. There is a question, though, going forward of what we are gleaning from these coincidental, perhaps, uh, data points, what we are getting a sense of in terms of the momentum. Are we getting any clues as to what's causing those frictions in labor markets or whether uh, those are actually abating? We have no answers. A lot of theories. Uh, one, of course, is that it is taking a while for people to come back off the sidelines because maybe they're not vaccinated yet or they're worried about other people who are not vaccinated yet, particularly in those services jobs, which are very customer facing. Uh, also, the story about whether or not with the schools still in hybrid, uh, whether we saw a lot of women out of the labor force because they had to stay home uh, with their kids. Uh, more schools opened up during the month. We'll see yeah. if that made a difference in May. Uh, and then the whole question about unemployment uh, benefits, whether they're keeping people at home. No definitive answers, but those are the theories at this point.